Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Donald Lozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to today's episode of Dr. Lozello's Sports Medicine Report. Today, I'm going to speak about my personal journey with anti-candida nutritional strategies. I'm going to talk about the symptoms that I had, the testing that I did, my objectives, the strategies that I used with nutrition and supplementation, and the outcome. The main symptom that I had was sugar cravings. I would eat a healthy breakfast, and then a few hours later on my way to my office, I would just start craving sugar. And I would have to eat a so-called health bar on my way to the office. Then I would get to the office, and I would have to eat a couple more because I was craving them so bad. And then I would get sleepy, and it was driving me crazy. And I would get incredibly hungry right before lunch. And after I ate lunch, even though my lunch was very healthy, I would get sleepy again. I was getting fatigued. And this was starting to drive me crazy. It was affecting my moods. It was affecting my concentration. I was unable to focus. So I had to figure out exactly what was causing this issue. From the symptoms that I was having, I speculated that I had a candida issue. But I wanted to do some testing to confirm it. I handle standard process supplements. I think that they are the best supplement company in the world. And I'm going to speak about the supplements that I used in a little bit. But they also have a microbiome test kit. This is a stool sample kit. So I purchased one of those and I used the test and then I sent it into the company and a few weeks later I got the results back. And just as I expected, I was positive for Candida. And so it confirmed my speculation. The second test I did was through Great Plains Laboratory. I did the IgG food map with candida and yeast test. This is a blood sample test and this also came back showing positive results for candida. So with both of these tests it did confirm that I had candida. My number one objective obviously was to eliminate the candida. I was going to do this by strengthening my gut, improving my gut health. And the way I accomplished that was to balance the microbiome and by strengthening my gut aligning. Again, I was going to balance the microbiome and strengthen my gut lining. I'm going to give you some technical definitions. The microbiome refers to the collective genomes of the microorganisms in a particular environment. And the microbiota is a community of microorganisms themselves. Microbiota diversity, a measure of how many species are evenly distributed in a community. Lower diversity is considered a marker of dysbiosis, which is a microbial imbalance in the gut and has been found in autoimmune diseases, obesity, cardiometabolic conditions, and in the elderly. The gut lining is single-celled. Therefore, it is very thin. If the gut lining is weak, it lets partially digested particles from the gut into the bloodstream. This causes an immune reaction. So therefore, you want to make sure that the gut lining is strong. And this was one of my objectives that I was trying to accomplish to help to combat my candida issues. My main nutritional strategy was to eliminate as much sugar as I possibly could from my nutritional strategies. Therefore, when I went grocery shopping, I would look at all the labels, and if anything had added sugar, I would not purchase it. I really looked hard at many different things to try to determine what worked best for me. I read a large number of professional articles. I read a large number of blogs. I watched as many videos as I possibly could to learn a great deal. I already know a lot about nutrition. I mean, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I handle supplements. I help people with their nutrition. But this was something that I really wanted to tackle and make this successful so I could show my patients firsthand how to do this. So my number one strategy was to eliminate all extra sugars. I'm going to go through my list of the nutritional strategies that worked for me. Now you have to realize we are all individuals and everybody has a different structure. I mean, we all have the basic genetics, but many times with individuals, someone may have a food allergy, someone may have different tastes in their food. So you have to find what works for you. I recommend that you keep a dietary journal and an exercise journal. 
Write down everything that you ate, how you prepared it, how much you ate, as many details as you possibly could. And then when you are finished eating, write down how you felt. Write down if it gave you energy. Write down if it made you sleepy. Take as much detailed notes as you possibly can. This is gonna help you to formulate your individual nutritional strategies. My nutritional strategies, like I said, the number one was to eliminate extra sugars. And then it was to limit the carbohydrates. I'm an Italian American guy. I love things like lasagna and pasta, and I try to limit them as much as I possibly could. Uh, increase water intake. I drink a lot of water here in Las Vegas. It's very dry, so I try to drink as much water as I possibly can, but I increased my water intake. I also started drinking kombucha. Now, kombucha is something you could find at the grocery store. What I did was I would get a cup of water, fill it about two thirds of the way, and the rest of it, I would fill it with kombucha. And then I would drink that. And there's different flavors, so find out whichever flavor that you like the best. Get a multitude of flavors. And also you have to look at the labels on the kombucha and make sure that there are no added sugars. I always bought the ones with no added sugar. I also drank more apple cider vinegar. What I usually try to do is for every two bottles of kombucha that I drank, I tried to drink one or two bottles of apple cider vinegar. Also with the apple cider vinegar, I would fill up my water cup about 75 to 80% and then I would fill the rest of it with the apple cider vinegar. Uh, kefir. Kefir is something that contains probiotics, which obviously is going to help to balance the gut microbiota. And that is something I drank a couple times a week. Sometimes I would just have two big glasses for dinner. I always try to choose organic foods when possible. If you can't choose organic, I would choose natural grass-fed or grass-finished. These are all going to be very healthy choices that you can make. Uh, minimal snacks between meals. If I had a snack, it was usually fruit, and those fruits were grapes, watermelons, or blueberries. Also, no processed foods. I eliminated as many processed foods as I possibly could. Uh, I had mentioned before that one of my main symptoms was I was craving sugar and I was craving the health bars or energy bars that I was eating. I eliminated all of those. And believe me, eliminating sugars and the bars and things that I'm used to eating is very difficult. The first two or three weeks was extremely, extremely difficult, but I was able just to power through it. And I stopped having the cravings on my way to the office. And when I first got to the office, I stopped having the fatigue when I was after lunchtime. So it was something that, that really helped out. So I eliminated the processed foods and I eliminated any bars. Uh, I love cookies, cakes, brownies, ice cream, especially chocolate chip cookies. Uh, that's my kryptonite. And I eliminated all of those things. Uh, no bread. Bread was something that I, I didn't really eat too much bread anyways, but I really eliminated that. Uh, no shakes, no ice cream. I love ice cream, especially cookie dough ice cream. Oh, it tastes so good. But I eliminated those and it helped me a great deal. Uh, like I mentioned before, I limited the pasta. Also, I limited sweet potatoes and potatoes. Some of the articles I read said to limit those. Uh, I love sweet potatoes. I didn't completely eliminate the sweet potatoes and the potatoes because I would have a serving maybe once a week or so, but I limited them a great deal. Uh, minimal amount of butter. I'm not a big butter person anyways. Some people like butter. You will meet nutritionists and people who are registered dietitians who love butter. And if they want to tell people to have butter, that's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm just not a big fan of butter. So eliminating that really wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, for dinner, it was going to be my smallest caloric meal of the day. And I was going to either have some fruit, or it could be a couple apples, could be some grapes, like I said before, watermelon, or I would put some blueberries in yogurt, uh, that usually helped, or I would have some soup. One of the meals that I really liked to make was I would get in the crock pot, 
I would make chicken noodle soup, but I would make it with bone broth. So really that was the only time I was having some noodles was when I was making the chicken noodle soup and the noodles that I got, they would be organic, uh, different flavors, different kinds, but it usually worked really well. My biggest caloric meal was either breakfast or lunchtime. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, what exactly I was having at those meals. Uh, other things that I did was no late night meals. I just didn't wanna eat food late at night and be stuffed and have to stay up later because I was full or lay in bed trying to fall asleep because I was stuffed. Uh, do not overeat. That was one thing uh, that was very difficult for me to learn throughout my entire life because I always loved to eat. So I just didn't want to stuff myself. I would stop when I got to the point where I was full. So I would not be overeating. I had already talked about the, the fruits, but I increased again, apples, grapes, watermelon, and blueberries. Uh, the bone broth I already talked about with my soup, but bone broth was very important. Then I increased plain yogurt. I looked at the yogurt and there was some good flavors in the yogurt. Uh, for instance, like strawberry and vanilla stuff that I love, but those had added sugar in them from the flavor. So I got plain yogurt and many times I would put organic blueberries in it and that would help do the trick. Uh, kefir, I had already mentioned that uh, I would drink kefir maybe once or twice, one or two cups uh, for dinner a week. Uh, sauerkraut, I'm not a big fan of sauerkraut, but sauerkraut is a fermented food that helps the gut a great deal. So I had it a couple times, but it's just not something that I really enjoy eating. Uh, kimchi, man, I, I love kimchi. There's a restaurant fairly close to my house that I like to go to that has kimchi pancakes. And one time I was at the grocery store and I saw a kimchi pancake mix. So I learned how to make those. So I'd have to buy kimchi. I always buy the mild. You could buy whatever kind that you want, but there are different uh, flavorings also of the kimchi. I always get the mild and there's some that have uh, turmeric in it. You know, you could get that or you could just get the regular kimchi and it will help a great deal with your gut health because it is fermented foods. I will actually mix kimchi into my eggs in the morning with breakfast. I'm gonna to get to the breakfast in just a little bit. And also buckwheat. I like buckwheat pancakes. Buckwheat is very good to help with elimination. So I was eating buckwheat pancakes maybe once a week or once every two weeks. I started my nutritional strategies to eliminate the candida around middle of September or so. And I started on a Friday. And this way I figured, okay, if I start on a Friday and I don't feel good on Friday, I could just power through it and then I could rest on Saturday and Sunday. But I didn't need to rest. I actually felt pretty good. Like I said, it took about two and a half or three weeks for the cravings to go away. But besides that, my energy level was fantastic. When I started, I started for 30 days with no cheat days. And then I think when I got to day like 28 or 29 or 30 or 31, then I had a little bit of a cheat day, but it was real small. And so then once a month, I would have a cheat day. And I had a cheat day on Thanksgiving and I had a cheat day on Christmas. It just so worked out that Christmas day was day 100. I didn't plan it that way, but it worked out that way. So Christmas day was day 100. And from Christmas day through New Year's, I relaxed my strategies a little bit. And then I started up again on January 1st and I went to the end of January. So this is something that I did for a while and it seemed to work really well. Breakfast and lunch were my bigger meals of the day. For breakfast, I love eggs. Uh, I would ha always have organic eggs. I cooked them over hard uh, with six small tomatoes that I put into the frying pan, uh, six or seven pieces of green leafy vegetables. I would have a large avocado on the side. Most days, maybe four or five days a week, I would have the avocado. If there was no avocado, I would have a can of sardines or half a can of tuna, or I would mix in the kimchi in the frying pan. The kimchi was usually three, four days a week, 
and then the sardines because I would eat the kimchi with the avocado if I was gonna if I didn't have an avocado then I would have the sardines or the half can of tuna just throw those in the frying pan and then I would also sprinkle over everything the organic turmeric organic cayenne pepper and organic cinnamon those are flavors that I like and those are spices that have seemed to work well for me all those spices are anti-inflammatory and they're also going to help with gut health that's why i used them so just a sprinkle of each of those three on top of my eggs and on top of the tomatoes and like i said six or seven green leafy vegetables and if the kimchi was mixed in or the sardines or the tuna i would sprinkle it on top of those for my lunch i would try to go as healthy as possible on my treatment days i usually get a meal prep uh, one of my friends, she does an excellent job with meal prep, so I get my meals from her. Uh, the meat that I had was either steak, salmon, or codfish. Uh, I would get it with rice or yams with the salmon and codfish. I get a small baked potato with the steak. That's why I talked about before. I didn't completely eliminate the potatoes because I usually had it with the steak once every two weeks. Uh, the vegetables would be broccoli, carrots, asparagus, or mixed vegetables. If I went out to eat on an office day, there are two very healthy restaurants right down the street from my office. And I'd usually either get a bison bowl, meaning that it is a bowl of bison meat with vegetables mixed in. Usually there's broccoli and sweet potatoes mixed in. That's why I said I didn't completely eliminate the sweet potatoes. And then, a, or I would get a bison wrap. On non-office days, if I was eating at home, I would make a healthy quiche with organic eggs. Uh, I would make the chicken noodle soup with bone broth that I already talked about. Uh, I love that. I usually had that every once, uh, one or two weeks. I'd make kimchi pancakes. I already mentioned the kimchi pancakes that I get at a restaurant. I learned how to make those with the mix that I bought. Oh, fantastic, I love those. Also make the buckwheat pancakes and pork chops. I would have the pork chops with some asparagus, or some green leafy vegetables, and that worked out really well. If I was going out to eat, I always made the healthiest choice. That is the key. Find what works for you and make the healthiest choice. I would get salmon, sometimes pork, pork chops, uh, duck, uh, kimchi fried rice. I know I mentioned kimchi several times, but I love the kimchi fried rice. Uh, also soup, I would get duck soup, uh, duck is something that you don't find at a lot of restaurants. So if I went to a restaurant where they serve duck, that was one of the first, where I thought they served duck, that was one of the first things that I looked for. So, oh, I'm gonna see if they have duck fried rice or duck soup. I had mentioned before that I handle standard process supplements. I was taking them throughout my anti-candita nutritional strategies plan. I always start new supplements on a Friday, just in case something doesn't work right. I can power through it on that Friday and then I have the Saturday and Sunday to recover. But everything worked perfectly fine. Uh, I had no issues at all. The standard process supplements that I used uh, it was Livoplex. That was one of them that was mentioned when I did the microbiome gut test. Okay, this is one that was recommended. It helped my liver to function better, which always helps with digestion. I took the Pro Symbiotic, which is a probiotic. I took Zypan. Zypan is a digestive enzyme uh, which helps mainly with protein. And I would take that after a large protein meal and then I started taking it in between meals because I learned that there is protein in the gut that has not been digested. There's food in the gut that has not been digested. So taking the digestive enzymes in between meals helped me to digest that food that was still sitting in my gut. I took a new product by Standard Process called GI Stability, a fantastic product that helped me a great deal. Another one called GI Adsorb. Uh, I took general health supplements, a multivitamin, multimineral called Catalan. I took supplements for joint health. The supplements for joint health that I took because I do a lot of exercise, uh, I train with the kettlebells, I've been doing Pilates, I do a lot of body weight exercises so that I want to keep my joints as healthy as possible. So I was taking several supplements from Standard Process for Joint Health and they all worked fantastic. I was taking what is called glucosamine synergy, 
Boswella complex. Some people call it Boswellia complex, whichever way you want to say it, it's the same thing. It worked perfectly. And then collagen C, which helps with joint health also. So those three products I took throughout the entire process. And then the last thing that I took was two immune system supplements. Always trying to keep my immune system healthy, especially during this pandemic. Now it is time for the disclaimer. Watching this video does not take the place of working with a medical professional, a nutritional professional, or a fitness professional. Please see a medical professional, nutritional professional, or fitness professional before starting any exercise program and before changing your nutritional strategies. This is going to help you to make sure that you are healthy enough for these strategies and that those strategies are the correct one for you. The strategies that I used were tailor-made for myself. I spent a long time trying to figure out exactly what would work. I read a large number of professional articles and a large number of personal articles on what worked for other people. And that's how I discovered the fermented foods like the kimchi and the sauerkraut, discovered kefir and plain yogurt. So these are things that will help you, but you have to make sure that you personalize your strategies so that they are working for you. The results were fantastic. I mean, I feel outstanding. I no longer have the sugar cravings. I no longer have the fatigue that I used to have. I lost a lot of weight. Unbelievable. Last week, I went and did a body fat composition uh, test video with my friend. Uh, you can see that video on my page. I'll put a link to that video so you can check that out. And I weighed in at 147. I haven't weighed 147 probably since 10th grade. When I started these strategies, I just saw the weight, especially on the sides, uh, just melting right off. And I could actually see my abs again. My waist looks really small. I don't know exactly what my waist measurement was. I'd have to talk to my friend who did the body fat testing on me. But my body fat, when I did the body circumference measurement test, which is the military test, was at 7%. And then when we did the seven site caliper test, it was at 12.4%. So somewhere in between is 9.7%, which is pretty good. Now, I don't know what my weight was before I started my strategies, and I don't know what my body fat was before I started my anti-candita nutritional strategies, but they both improved a great deal. My body composition improved a large amount. My waist is very small. There were dress pants that I couldn't even fit into, or I could fit into it, but they were really tight. And now I wear them and they are incredibly loose. All of my belts became too big. I had to buy a new belt, one of the belts that uh, doesn't have the holes in it, but it has the clips. And so I, I had to buy a belt like that just so I would get a belt that worked with every pair of pants that I had. So that is how much weight that I lost around my waist, all the fat that I lost just from doing these strategies. And then again, I feel great. I no longer have the sugar cravings. When I have my cheat days, I relax. I have a chocolate chip cookie or I have an ice cream and I have a very small amount and that helps. You know, when your strategies are too strict, it makes it much more difficult. So I loosen my strategies. Like I said, I have that cheat day like once a month and it really helps out a lot. And I just have a small amount, enough to say, oh man, hey, that was good to have a little bit of ice cream or that was good to have a chocolate chip cookie or a brownie or have a big sandwich with, with some bread. You know, all those things help you to relax a little bit. But then once I have it, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I gotta get back on the strategies. And it helped me a great deal deal to do these strategies so that I feel better and I look better. I have more energy. I'm no longer fatigued after lunch. I'm no longer craving that sugar when I'm on my way to the office and when I first get to the office. So I really feel that my anti-candita nutritional strategies have helped me a very large amount. Thank you everybody for watching today's video, my personal journey on my anti-candita nutritional strategies. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to like 
this video. If you have questions, feedback, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. You can subscribe to my YouTube page, Dr. Donald A. Ozello, DC. I am Dr. Donald Ozello of Championship Chiropractic in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am the author of Running, Maximize Performance and Minimize Injuries. You can visit my website, championshipchiropractic.com, where you can get additional information on the book and you can all also find my blog. My blog contains articles on spine health, sports medicine, exercise, chiropractic care, and nutrition. So thank you again for watching today's video. Always remember to train hard, but train smart. Get adequate rest between your training sessions. Utilize nutritional and supplementation strategies that work for you. Stay injury-free and accomplish your goals.